Good day, everybody. How's it going out there? Well, it's that time of year again. Nominations are in for the Ursa Major Awards. Woo! So, in the description below, there's a link to the voting page. Um, if you are interested in voting for the top anthropomorphic content for the year of 2022, um, you can go to that link and make a, a vote really quick. Um, we're just going to make this really thick and go over the list of nominees. Um, very much a, uh, a real smorgasbord this year of stuff. Like, usually we have some weird outliers. Um, but in this year, we just, uh, just basically, we have a very, a lot of good, good, good content that came out. Um, I'm not going to tell you what I think about these particular movies, or, or I'm not going to tell you how I'm voting, in essence, because I want you to vote for yourself. Um, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of different opinions on it. I'm going to make guesses on who I think will probably win it, but um, that's just based upon just feelings of, like, how, you know, they've been received throughout the year and stuff like that, if I have an opinion on it. Um, but I won't tell you how to vote. So, <clears throat> first one, most motion picture. We got DC League of Super Pets. I haven't seen that one. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I haven't seen that one. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I have seen that one. Um, the Bad Guys and Turning Red. Now, I haven't seen either of those. And it's always funny how I don't see a lot of movies. So I don't have a lot of opinions on those movies. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was okay. But I don't think it's going to win because I heard a lot of good things around the thing about Puss in Boots. And on top of that, it's the... It's the last, it's not only the one I heard the most about, it's also the last one that came out in the year. It came out on December 21st here. And timing does have an impact on people's memory and being able to enjoy something. So like it's the, it's the hotness that's, it's not only the hottest hotness in the, in the fandom, no pun intended with death, the, with the, with the wolf character there, uh, with, uh, but, uh, you know, it's a, a thing where uh, I think that's probably going to win pretty handily. Um, bad guys, like on any other year, ironically, I think the bad guys are turning red might have had a chance. But this year's just too strong, unfortunately, for them. Best dramatic uh, short work we have Horns, The Legend of Pipe, um, Monkey Wrench, and Tails. Now, I did a whole. Um, I did a whole article on it. I did a whole video on like what my feelings on these were, so I won't delve too much deeper into that. You can watch that up in the description, up in the card above. Um, obviously, the, the now the great thing is is that the the most funny thing about the the dramatic shorts is is that <laughs> the article that I wrote the the basically it's almost a one to one projection, and it kind of scares me honestly. Like basically, other than like these, I had like a the sort of 11 to consider and sort of I put them in the order of how much I preferred them um, top to bottom. So it was like kind of an ordered list. And like only the the Pokemon Bidoof Big Day didn't make it on this list. So, and after that, like it was just right in order. Horns, Legend of PP thing. And then obviously... That's just coincidence because this is in alphabetical order, not in any, like, how many people liked it order. But it's kind of funny. <laughs> that it's like, other than the Bidoof's Big Day, like, these are the, like, top ones. So, kind of interesting. Um, I'm, I'm kind of happy for a lot of these creators. They put a lot of hard work in their, in their dramatic shorts. I'm kind of glad that my dramatic shorts didn't get in there. Because as funny as that was, it's not, uh, not my goal. Anyway, uh, best dramatic uh, series, we have Bluey, which I've heard a lot about, haven't seen. Hell of a Boss, uh, season two, The Circus and Seeing Stars. The whole entire season two was done in last year? They were busy. Um, the Owl House, um, I have not heard of that one. And that's probably why I clicked on the link. It's like, what is that? <laughs> Tuca and Birdie, uh, season three, mature audiences. Now, the interesting thing about that is that I didn't even know that there was a season two, honestly. I, I watched the first season, I really liked it, and I never saw it after that. And now I'm hearing that there's a season three. It's like, wow, 
Really, that's crazy. Zootopia Plus. Um, I heard about it, haven't seen it. Once again, it's like one of those things where I don't have a lot of streaming services and I don't watch a lot of movies because I think it's sort of a social experience. Um, so I don't engage in that kind of stuff as much. Um, but I would definitely like... I definitely like to do those kind of things when I have time, but not much time in the world these days. <clears throat> Best novel, I certainly haven't read any of these because reading a novel takes a lot of time, unfortunately. Um, these are 40,000 words or more. We have I mean, a, faux, uh, a furry faux paw, brother at arms, mouse cage, um, scars of the golden dancer, and toll dot. I like seeing that there's a variety of authors here because usually, I, I mean, with a novel, it's sort of, I guess it's, it's not too unusual in the novel space because writing a novel is a lot of work. Um, I've written, I think I wrote one novella, I think, size things. Um, and it's, it's, it is tough to do and you can't, you certainly can't really mass produce a novel. Like a novel is something that comes out and like you're not doing more of the one more of one of those a year for sure. Best short fiction. Um, now these ones usually are more um, more put on there, but this one also has a lot of variety, which is surprising. Usually in previous years we had a bunch of Mary E. Lloyd stuff, so maybe Mary E. Lloyd backed off a little bit and said we're gonna you know decide as a, as a fandom or as a Mary Lloyd fandom which one I want to be up there and put the one up there to give other authors spaces. I don't know if that's the case or not, but if that's if that's the case, then hats off. Um, we have uh, Bears and Bravery by Gray Seven G Letterman. Uh, we have Drop Horse by Husketeer. Um... Null by Aliso Hyder, um, The Otter's Wings by Mary E. Lloyd, and uh, The Swift-Footed Darling of the Rocks, Don't Actually Call Me That, by Mary Crook. I never, or Mary Croak? Mary Croak. I had not heard of Mary Croak before. Well, these other names I've heard. Um, as a, I've heard them, as a, and they've been furry writers for a while. Um, Null actually is for mature audiences. So it's interesting that we have like uh, we have like three things for mature audiences that are in there so far. Um, so that's actually fascinating as well because I know that Ursa Majors also you know allows for mature audience entries. Um, <clears throat> obviously, that's a, a thing with accessibility. Sometimes it's ironic because a lot of people will joke. It's like, hey, <laughs> adult works have like the ability to. Uh, to reach a larger, more dedicated audience, but I think it's more that, you know, mature things might make you more money because, you know, mature people have money to throw around, whereas people who are not mature don't. But at the same time, like, it's harder to reach a larger audience um, when, you're, when your work might squick somebody because it has um, certain elements to it that somebody might not want to read about. Right. But anyways, <clears throat> enough about that. Best general literacy work, literary work, which is usually anthologies and, and collections of things like that. Um, we have Circles Volume 4. Once again, a surprise for me because I thought Circles was done. Like, I haven't heard the word Circles in a long time. And it was like my brain just was like the dust in the, in the back corners went Really? That's still a thing? He actually, they actually uh, made a, a new one? <laughs> like, I think I saw like number one and number two when they were first out, like around the internet, like way, way, way back in the day. Like, I think this was 2007-ish, 2005-ish, like almost 20 years now, I, I suspect, is when I last saw it. And I'm like, wow, they actually are continuing to do that. Um, so anyways, that was a surprise. Roar Volume 11. They've been doing this for 11 years now. Holy cow. 
And I think they make it on this thing almost every year. So, um, Usagi, Yonjimbo Origins, Yonjimbo, Yonjimbo. I can't pronounce things. Usagi fans are going to slap me in the face. Usagi trade paperback version. So these are IDW. IDW has actually got some pretty strong candidates this year. Um, you have When the Young, When the World Was Young, a prehistoric anthology. That one I'm not, I don't know who that is actually, but it's uh, interesting. So basically, it's like the furry historical fiction society anthology. So it's like a dino book maybe? That sounds interesting. All right, now some of the things I actually do know. Though interestingly, like the the interesting thing about um, the the nonfiction section this year is like the the things that I put in were completely different from what everyone else put in. Um, that one I should have known was kind of going to be there. I probably forgot to write that one down because I when I find a good furry article, I'll I'll write it down or put it in a spreadsheet and then go back to it later and think about you know its impact for the year. Um, so we have Art Furries God by Patricia Taxon. Furries and the Ethics of Cringe Culture. I actually never heard that one. I'm actually I might watch it after I record this by Curtis Connor. Um, Furry Fiction, The Squishy Edges and the Heart, Mary Lloyd. I did scan that one a little bit. It's mostly about like the genre of furry and how it is defined and things like that. Most of you have already know this one because I did a video on it and um, and also wrote a long article on it. And that was Ursa Major's Issues, Confident Self-Promotion versus Passionate Skill in voting si and a Voting Systems Favoritism by Sunnies. And that was that one long video that I wrote, or one long article that I wrote along with the thing. So yes, I am Ursa Major nominated. Woo! Thank you everyone who decided to nominate that. Um, it was a, it was a long and interesting article. I think it was, <clears throat> I think it did end up making the nominations a lot more better this year. Like, I think it's just because there were so many good choices this year, but at the same time, it's like, like when I look at stuff like, uh, you know, the, the dramatic shorts, which is the thing I was sort of focusing on this year because I thought last year's dramatic shorts, you know, missed some good, good missed some missed missed the mark in my opinion, and I think it was because people weren't drawing attention to animation and the and the and the genre. Um, but like how, just like almost one to one is kind of scary here. After I wrote my reviews on it and shared it with people, I think it got people passionate about it, and I hope that that's the case. Um, and, and that's the thing I like about the furry fandom in general, honestly, is that all you got to tell them is that, hey, like, something might be wrong here, and they'll they'll generally listen to you. Like, that, like, you don't have to force things by committee. You don't have to get into this whole, like, using power infrastructure in order to push people into the right or the wrong way. Um, you basically just say hey like this is how the system is working it may not be working the way we intended it to be aware when you're voting to vote with intent because you know you know if, if a person has a very passionate fan base you know they can basically tilt the scales and things like that and so i think that this year in the nominations i'm seeing like um you know this this strong thing I used the last year's examples of the like what happened with you know the winner, which was you know Garrison, which as I noted before, hold no animosity towards Garrison. In fact, if we move forward a little bit, um, you're gonna find that for the best comic strip, you know Garrison made it, even though none of their things, even though none of Garrison's items were our Kathy Garrison Kellogg's things were listed. Um, on the recommended reading list, right? She was able to get her main comic strip nominated. And I'm actually very happy that that happened because I think that it shouldn't be a punishment that, you know, an artist who has a passionate fan base um, should not, should be able to participate. I don't think that that's a problem whatsoever. Um, 
it's more it's sort of a information sort of thing it, it, it has there's a lot of uh, elements to the problem and, and you know Garrison was just moving in the forward with like I want to push people to be passionate about furry artwork and that's great um, I also wanted to brought, take that passion that you know she had focused on her works and spread it out a little bit right taking the, the that focus that she put in and then kind of just spreading it out and <clears throat> I think that the article did that very well um, more probably better than I intended to and and I, I apologize to uh, Ursa Majors a little bit um, because obviously they were the comment section does what comment sections and Flara does and got a little fanatic but you know that's what happens sometimes when you write is that you can't you can't dictate what people's reactions to your words are going to be and that's always the hardest part about nonfiction is that you can you can control your own words and what and, and have an intention but you can't control what the audience is going to how the audience is going to receive that intention. Um, the best that you could do is, you know, do what you can. Anyways, uh, next one was Dining Reeves, uh, who runs the internet. Um, so obviously, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for in this in the in the group of nonfiction because I obviously have a little bit of bias, if you know what I mean. But Obviously, if you're watching this video, you're probably going to be voting that for number one anyway. So, thank you very much for your support on that. And uh, I, being nominated enough is very awesome and cool, and I like it. And thank you very much. I don't like to self promote, but getting recognition is awesome, even if you don't ask for self promote. Even if, even if you don't seek um, recognition, it's always great to receive it. Um, Best graphic story. Um, we have Slightly Damned. It's still going. Wow. It's been a while. Uh, and you have the two, you, uh, once again, you have two Usagi Ujimbos um, here. You have the Whiteboard Stock Sherlock Holmes by Doc N. You have Sonic the Hedgehog um, episodes, uh, issues 48 to 55. Um, I actually started getting into the to the Sonic comics a little bit recently, but I have not gotten to issues those issues yet. Um, everything else I have not consumed either. Uh, comic strip haven't consumed any of these other than Foxes in Love. I'll see every once in a while. It, you know, Foxes in Love is sort of a I would say it's episodic. It's more like it just is like you see the posts and the post the comics are not contingual. They're just kind of like you know two foxes in love and like sort of the kind of thing that goes with it. Um, Part time dragon, sort of similar thing. <clears throat> uh, Duncan and Eddie. I, I, oh yeah, I know what Duncan and Eddie is now that I'm thinking about it. I know what Carry On is and the whiteboard. I guess like, I guess the whiteboard, uh, this Sherlock Holmes one is a, probably an extended version of Doc N's the whiteboard, right? It was probably more of a larger arc, and it looks like it did last from October three to fifteenth, so that's probably what that, that's all about. Anyways, best magazine doesn't change that much year to year because there's not too many furry magazines out there. Uh, we have Deep Sky Anchor, which I think is somewhat of a new one. Looks like Mary E. Lloyd is creating magazines for. Um, for writers and things like that. Um, and she's got Zooscape as well. And then there's Dog Patch Press. The interesting thing about Dog Patch Press last year, you notice here that it only goes up to September 30th. And I don't know if he was busy or something happened or. He started posting again right around when the Ursa Majors were being announced, but like he, he fell a little bit off. The horse a little bit for that last quarter kind of makes me feel better about <laughs> missing my own videos and things like that whereas like flare we were able to at least spread things out so that we had most of the year at least had con some sort of content coming in um but i it's like i can't do full credit for that um i do transcriptions for um what's his name thabo meerkat and his uh digging up positivity 
Um, his videos are always great. It always shows the semblance of positive community, which I think is necessary, and it sort of offsets some of the articles that I write, which are a little more critical or negative. Um, you know, it's always good to have, you know, ideas and reasons as to why the community exists in a positive light as just opposed to concentrating on the negative all the time. Um, and things such as that. So, um, obviously, uh, once again, biased here. Obviously, I, I write for, for, I'm an editor for a player, so I would obviously hope that we win this year. I think that this year... If, if there's any year that we may have the strongest uh, ability to actually win it would be this year. I think once, because well, obviously Dogpatch has, as I said, kind of stumbled here a little bit at the end of the year. Um, I think that people conversating, you know, I think the conversation has sort of moved away from Dogpatch Press a little bit over that year. Hopefully they get back on the horse. I, I'm always, I'm always one for more uh nonfiction. i'm always one for like better you know community conversation irregardless if it's me doing it in fact if it's not me doing it then it makes it easier for me because everyone you know people are putting in the work to keep you know conversations in the community going and that's always the the whole point of nonfiction. so best illustration i'm kind of surprised that only four of them made it because there was like so many on the list and like i guess the nominations were divided on that last one too much but interestingly um i think the two i when i looked them all, all over all of them in fact i could just show them right um this is dragon party here um this is the mercenary here as you can see, there's a lot of attention to detail in these. These are really, really well done. I really, really like this one because of the like the character and the composition. I really, really like it, and it's sort of it's it's sort of very simple, and like it's really hard to do, you know, art with the yeah. It's sort of simple and not too busy. Uh, this one though is really, really good. I like this one as well. Um, Like I really like the, you know, the gravity and the and the sort of like sweeping skyline. It's very pretty. Um, so yeah, like, very good animation. I'm surprised there wasn't a fourth, a fifth one. As I said, like they basically how they do nominations is that there's not enough people to select one. They'll kind of go off on that. So best computer game. This is one that we should be able to really utilize, right? Because <laughs> that's what I do on my channel on the weekends. Um, we have best game, um, Cult of the Lamb. Uh, Klonoa Fantasy Revere series, which we did play on this channel. Um, Lookouts, I have not played. Um, it doesn't say mature audiences here, so maybe I should add that to the list. Um, I'll probably I'll add that to the list next time. It doesn't say mature audiences, so it's free to play. It's an internet game, so um, I think if it's or some nominated, it definitely should be on the list. I think Cult of the Lamb is already in the voting list, um, but the other two we've already played on this channel which are Stray and Tunic. So of the three that I have played, um, I haven't played Lookouts, and I don't think I'm gonna be playing it by the time Ursa Majors come around. So of the three that I played, the order, I, I personally am like, I, li I really, really like Tunic um, because of that, like, gold, that golden path puzzle was just, mwah. like, uh, it's something that was so good. It was so good. The whole game was designed around it. It is a, it's a work of art. It is a craftsmanship that I've never seen and probably never see again in a video game. In fact, it's probably... If I were younger, I would have played the heck out of Tunic. I would have. It would have been one I played again and again and again. Fortunately, I'm older, so I don't do that as much anymore. Um, but it is definitely an experience that I enjoyed a lot. Um, I think Klonoa was kind of a second for me, and then Stray was kind of the last... Stray was interesting, but it, I think it's, I don't think it had a sticking power in, in an essence. It was kind of a very simple, easy story. It was cute for what it was, and it definitely it was definitely something t worth talking about. 
Uh, Klonoa, though, is um, is a classic, and I and I and I can see why it was a classic when I played through those games. So, um, yeah, that's sort of my take on those. But you can vote however you like. You probably have played Cult of the Lamb, so you'd probably you know have a say on that whether that one was better than any of these. Uh, best website. This one usually doesn't change too much from year to year. We have uh, E621, uh, Fluffle, uh, Reverse Image Search. I had never heard of that before. That's actually very interesting. It's probably very useful too because, you know, people claiming art as their own and stuff like that. Never used it. Should probably look into it. Uh, for Affinity, of course. Uh, Wiki for, of course. Uh, Kimono Cafe. Furry webcomic hosting. I've never heard of that one too. So interestingly, like, I think that the interesting thing about best website here that we can see is that if you have an idea for a new furry website and you really have a you really want to get people involved and passionate about it, you could sort of use it as pseudo advertising space. Even though I kind of just wrote a whole article against doing something like that, so I'm kind of going against my own word. But if you really really wanted to, you could do that. <laughs> And then, so, because, like, I've never heard of Fluffle, I've never heard of Canoa Cafe, but apparently they have enough people to get them nominated. Um, or at least enough people working on them or a large enough community. And, interestingly, best anthropomorphic fursuit here is Empty and Blank, um, because no one else participated in it. I'm going to say this, it's, fursuits... It's, it's, you know, the, the furries, furries, are, like, I can make a whole video on it, so I probably shouldn't go on right here, but it, even though furries are passionate about fursuiting and the craft of fursuiting and the art of fursuiting, um, I, I don't think it's something that they think about on an annual basis, right? They don't think about the new hotness for the year or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> I think what needs to happen is that it's not going to happen unless the fursuit makers get involved. And I might, and I, yeah, I think I'll do a whole article or a video on it. Um, I think I think the best thing that can happen is that the fursuit creator themselves go, hey, can I put this on the recommended Ursa Major list when I'm finished designing it, right? Because because here's the thing, the best, the only per people who really know when a fursuit was actually made is the fursuit maker. So the fursuit maker, I think, is sort of, all, if we want this category to take off, like the fursuit maker's gotta be the one to put their foot in the door um, and, and say, hey, this is the fursuit I made this year, here's some pictures of it. Um, and submit it for the recommendation list and then go there, go that route. And I think that would make that more lively and, and, and pushing. Uh, best anthropomorphic music. Um, another rainy railway day, um, can, you know, can opener, can opener's notebook, uh, cute cur curve volume one. So it looks like they decided album. So it looks like they decided that the music is going to be the entire album. And, and if I were, if I were to make a suggestion here, um, I would lean into that say best furry music album and best furry music single um, as two separate categories. If, like do album for a few years and then, you know, if it shows that there's a lot of people interested in voting for that, um, I would say like in a, in a few years, add a best anthropomorphic single, music single, right? Because a single is different than an album. Um, you know, usually when I think of music, I think of them as singles, and that's more of a prevalent thing these days. Albums are kind of an archaic thing. Um, back when, you know, people would buy a chunk of music and like to, to make the cost benefit, uh, like kind of a thing, you would make record labels and do that thing. So it's sort of a traditional thing, and it seems like it's, a, it's still a thing that's happening here. And apparently we had enough people make five albums this year, so apparently albums are still a thing. Um... I think albums are sort of a way that people justify the price of like putting $20 down towards something because it's like, hey, I'm getting more than one song here. Um, but a really, really good single is like, to me, very, very like different than a, than a good album. You can have a really bad album with like one really good single. That's why they call some things one hit wonders. Um, 
But anyways, that's enough rambling. I, that was all the categories. Uh, be sure to uh, uh, go to the website here, uh, voting, and then basically you can uh, uh, you can basically click here to uh, log your votes and do that. I've kind of done a, a, a video on how to do voting before. Um, basically, you just put in your, you just relabel things one to five, or sorry, <laughs> you do similar to what you do for voting for my things. You basically, you know, say I give this first place, second place, third place. And so you get a certain amount of points that you get towards putting that. If you want to know a lot more details about how the voting system works, well, then you have this, you have my article here about the, the, you have the, my article here about the, uh, the two di the the way that it that it works in more detail than you can ever hope to really ever want. So, and that's up for some major votes. So, vote for vote for whatever you like in the Ursa Major Awards. Anyways, I went along a little rambly, but it's uh, it's uh, that time of year, and I you know a lot of people have things to think. What do you think about these? Uh, Ursa Majors, what are the ones you voting for? What ones are you passionate about? Be sure to kick a comment in the comment section. Kick that like, kick the subscribe button, and we will see you guys again, uh, hopefully next week. Hopefully I'll have some video next week to, to cover things on. But you know me, maybe, maybe not. I'll try to be better about it. Thanks for your patience. Have a good one.